So I just want to give you a quick update on the contest I hosted recently with the Mavic Pro drone as first prize and the P900 as second prize. I plan to tally up the votes this weekend and announce the two winners shortly thereafter. This is my Mavic Pro in a hard case and this is the white one which belongs to my daughter. We have a number of overseas trips planned as a family this year and so using these hard cases will allow us to transport the drones quite safely. Now as far as I'm concerned, every entry to my contest was a winner. They satisfied the elements of the challenge and therefore after awarding the first and second prize, I will be awarding each of the contestant entries a $100 Amazon gift voucher as well. So once again, thanks for entering the competition and the videos you've produced are a valuable resource for people to understand the shape of the earth we live on. So I want to touch on a few other points in this video as well. And one of those is my challenge to flat earthers to produce a real flight plan that works for the flat earth. Now, I am a patient man and I've spent a lot of time interacting with flat earthers, but it's time you guys stopped playing a little league. You know, really, if you cannot show me a map that works, if you cannot show me a flight plan for your flat earth, then in my book, you're an amateur. I fly real aircraft around the real earth. I've been around it numerous times, full circumnavigations entirely in the Northern Hemisphere and also entirely in the Southern Hemisphere. I can navigate precisely to any location on earth from any location on earth. If you're a flat earther, there is no point coming to my channel if you can't produce an accurate flight plan for your flat earth, you're just wasting your time because I consider you an amateur. I'm a professional who knows how to navigate around the real earth. If you can't do that, don't waste your time on my channel. So the other point I want to touch on briefly is this convex earth documentary which came out recently and caused a great deal of embarrassment for the Flat Earth community. I had numerous comments on my channel in advance of the release of the documentary from Flat Earthers already claiming victory purely based on the pre-releases for the documentary. Now, in every case, my response to them was, are you really going to fall for every scam they throw at you? Now, when the documentary came out, a lot of the large Flat Earth channels quickly adopted it and mirrored it on their own channel. Subsequently, they realized it was a scam and they have withdrawn their support. Now, the one thing I want to say is that no Globo was fooled by this scam. Only flat earthers fell for this nonsense. And one thing I found quite hilarious was that I received an email from a prominent flat earther with a link to this documentary when it was released. And in his email, he stated that I would kill myself after watching the documentary and insisted that I apologize to him for being wrong. Now, I replied back after watching the documentary, stating that I almost died laughing. And as Karma would have it, he ended up with egg on his face and is probably still wiping it off. So if you haven't seen the documentary, don't waste your time with it, but I do recommend watching Sly Sparkane's 12 minute analysis of the experiments involved because he shows very clearly why the experiments are flawed and why the video is a complete waste of time. And the final thing I want to show you is a bit of experimentation I have been doing with this Skywatcher Alp Azimuth mount. Now it's not an equatorial mount, but by tricking the mount into believing it is at the South Pole and angling the azimuth axis in accordance to our latitude, effectively polar aligning the azimuth axis, we are able to use this mount as an equatorial mount. And I'll show you that now. So here's the Skywatcher as GTI mount configured as I normally use it, attached to a standard camera tripod and as an alt azimuth mount, the azimuth axis 
is aligned vertically. And in fact, there's a small bubble level on top that assists with aligning it correctly. Now in this mode, because neither of the axes are aligned with the rotational axis of the Earth, it needs to use two axes of rotation to track the sun. It needs to be moving in the azimuth axis, and it also needs to be moving in the altitude axis. So as it tracks the sun across the sky, it's using both axes. Unlike an equatorial mount, which only requires a single axis of rotation, because that axis of rotation is aligned with the Earth's rotation, this mount needs to use two axes of rotation because neither of these axes are aligned with the rotational axis of the Earth. That led me to a personal challenge. I thought, I wonder if I can configure this mount somehow to operate as an equatorial mount, and doing so would require adjusting the orientation of the mount so that the azimuth axis is aligned with the Earth's rotational axis. And this is just a preview of some of the success I've had with that. So there's the ASGTI mount fitted to a small equatorial base. And that base came with this mount, the Star Adventurer mount. They both use the same size thread underneath, so the mount attaches perfectly. And what I was able to do was align the azimuth axis of the ASGTI mount with my latitude of 34 degrees here in Sydney. So that axis is effectively now polar aligned. And that means when the mount is tracking objects in the sky, be it the sun, the stars or the moon, it only needs to rotate a single axis. It no longer requires the movement of the altitude axis. It can track objects in the sky using only the azimuth axis because it is now effectively the polar axis. So because this is not an equatorial mount, it contains no software for operating in the equatorial mode. From virtually every location on Earth, when configured normally, this mount would require two axes of rotation to track the sun during the day. The only two locations on Earth where this mount would only use a single axis to achieve that would be directly at the North Pole or at the South Pole. So to operate this mount as an equatorial mount, we have to trick the mount into believing it is either at the North Pole or the South Pole. And we can do that very easily with the SynScan Pro app, which is used to control this mount by going into the settings disabling the auto location sensor and entering the latitude manually. It won't accept 90 south, but it will accept 89 degrees, 59 minutes and 59 seconds, which is about 100 feet geographically from the South Pole. So that's more than close enough. The longitude can be zero. And when we go out, you can see it rounds to 90 south anyway. So it's now configured correctly for operation at the South Pole. So at this point, when we set up the mount and we face the camera towards the sun and we ask the mount to track the sun, it will be doing that believing it is located at the South Pole and therefore it will only be moving and rotating in that azimuth axis, effectively operating as an equatorial mount. And the fact that it can track the sun accurately from Sydney, Australia, which is many thousands of miles away from the real South Pole, proves that the sun is not local. And the geometry of this polar alignment being 34 degrees from the horizontal in Sydney, Australia, also proves the globe geometry. And I'm happy to report that it works exactly as expected. I was using the mount earlier today in this configuration with a solar filter on the P900 and tracking the sun for about 30 minutes. The mount was rotating using only this single axis and the sun was remaining nicely positioned 
in the center of the LCD frame. So as I mentioned, this is just a preview and I will be doing a more detailed follow-up on why the geometry of this works and how we can use this Skywatcher as GTI mount as an equatorial mount quite easily.